So welcome to another episode of Just One Thing, where training gym owners get actionable insights to grow their team business. So welcome, Tom. And uh, yeah. Good good to be back. We're doing a lot of these these days. So <laughs> We are. We are. And, and each episode, so what do you got for me today? Where are, we, where are we going for this one today? Yeah. In each episode, I get more questions than I get more questions than inside more questions. So, you know, picking up on the theme about reinventing oneself, we spoke about firing members that you don't like in the last episode. But what about you liking members and you're enjoying them and but you decided to totally shutter that team training or that that aspect of your business and you decided to move forward to open up more space in your small gym, which is only going to be providing small group training now. And now you have to let go of these members to make that space because you have limited space, you have limited capacity. How, how do you let go of members in that scenario? What are you saying to them? Because they've not done anything wrong. They've They've supported you. They've helped you to come to this place now. So now what do you do? There's, um, it's a very good question. There's a lot of good angles on that. You know, the one I think comes to mind first is repetition fatigue. We've talked about this in a couple of other episodes, but the repetition fatigue is really where sometimes the, it's the same old, same old just wears me out. Um, I just read an article in the Wall Street Journal how badly Peloton's doing now. They're discounting their bikes. They're you know trying to dump their monthly service. You know, you buy a bike, I'll give you three months free, and all this. Well, people found that you know we were laughing about, we were talking about. I think we've even talked about one of these earlier episodes. Is you know the you know you're sitting there on your bike in your bedroom by yourself, and you've been doing that the entire virus. You know your kid's screaming, and you know your spouse is trying to get you off the bike so he or she can get on the bike, and all of a sudden you just you just like oh my god, I just I just I can't do this anymore. There's there's a lot of businesses where repetition fatigue is really a undiscovered part of the business plan. So if I have a circuit type business. Uh, and I have 1,800 feet, and I have 30 people crammed shoulder to shoulder going from treadmills to some kind of fixed equipment, and they're doing the whole circuit through the room, you know, you, it, the view never changes. You, you do that every single day. You're just at some point in here, it, ju- it just wears you out. You just can't do it anymore. So what happens in the, the gym is there's, there's a few people that love that, but you have to look at the bigger pictures. You need to reinvent your business every couple of years just to prevent that from your own business. You just, you know, you, your members, the bulk of the members need to see that change and that growth. The problem is there are those members that just like, don't change a thing. Don't change the paint. Don't, don't move the equipment. Don't fire that staff. I love that person. Don't just don't change. So there's a point where when you try to reinvent your business and that you have to look around and going, okay, I, we were really good at team training, but that's, that's done. Team training, uh, meaning a large group of people doing some kind of circuit thing, be it old style CrossFit to um, circuit training like F45, like Orange Theory, all those type of things. They're all very variations of circuit training where I come in, I just work through a process and leave. Um, that was dying before the virus. So how do I take, if I'm a heavy, heavy team guy, how do I reinvent myself? Well, I can do it several different ways. One is I can keep what I'm doing down here, but maybe add some different layers on top to start to dilute that membership. So the first real business hint is, can I dilute what I have without destroying it first? So that's one of the things. Uh, The very successful guy in the Pittsburgh area, he has about 11,000 foot. Uh, Josh and Tammy are the owners of this gym, Pittsburgh North, actually. It's a very, very exceptional gym. Um, and it is, they or had team training pre-virus and the team people, because of the rate they were charging, actually turned out to be the biggest problem people in the gym. They're the ones that canceled the most or they're the ones that were arguing about money because they were that 26 or 24 to 36 year old group, but they're the ones that just weren't that far down the path yet financially. So they'd get in, go four or five months and then 
blow apart, change jobs or something. He said, I'd love the concept. So what he did was just raise the price, did away with that concept, kept all the members that wanted to stay, did not raise the rates, but then made the cheapest entry into the gym at $229 a month. So instead of having a team rate, which was the problem, he honored the members and kept them, but diluted it by going more into small group training because everybody that wanted to do team here, then you get into one-on-one training. And he also diluted the team training by adding boxing and uh, adding restoration of natural movement and a few other levels there. So he, he kept the members, but diluted it. But now he's making sure that, no, it's very hard for new people to come in because everybody joins the gym now at least gets training. So he kind of killed that category without killing the members. So dilution is one way to kind of make that change as you go through where, yes, I'm not, I'm honoring your price. I'm honoring you. and I'm keeping most of the services, but, and you're going to have access to whatever changes I make as part of that, but we're not going forward with that membership or that price. So the safest way is dilution of where you start to expand the different offerings within the business. It's seldom that you have to kill team to move into small group, but you can take team and reinvent it. So if I've got five guys in my market doing circuit and they're all 149, I can take my circuit, add boxing, a big boxing program. I can add restoration movement. I can do my own cardio circuit. Uh, I can get into guided meditation. I might have five or six offerings for the same price point that everybody else has one. You know, you go around the circuit that breaks down the repetition fatigue, which we started this segment with, but I'm also diluting that. So over time, that becomes a less important part of my business and it ends up supporting other parts of the business. So I, I, I think the simplest and safest way is a dilution process where you, okay, I'm, I'm going to hang on to you, but what you hear is just, it's not quite going to be the same. And then if you lose a few members in that transition, you did the right thing. You at least tried to honor the members that were with you in the early part. Fair enough. Okay. So dil- I like that dilution without destroying. I like that concept. And yeah, dilution without sharing. destruction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Without destruction. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So thanks again, Tom. It's always a pleasure to have you. And on that note, we will end this episode of Just One Thing. Yeah. The short but sweet on this one. Good question, man. Thank you. Yeah.